everyone, you're welcome to solve this nice algebra problem, which is 4 to power n plus 3 to power n. This is equal to 91. What is the value of n? Now let's prevent the solution from here. We have 4 to power n plus 3 to power n. This is equal to 91. We can express 4 to power n as 4 to power n raised to power 1, then plus 3 to power n raised to power 1. This is equal to 91. So from here, we can express 1 as 1 over 3 times 3. Substituting this, this implies that we have 4 to power n raised to power 1 over 3 times 3. This is the same thing as 1. Then plus 3 raised to power n raised to power 1 over 3 times 3. This is equal to 91. The next step is that this is actually in the form of a to power n raised to power m which we can express as a to the power n times m. So now applying this exponent property, here we have 4 raised to the power n over 3, raised to the power 3, then plus 3 raised to the power n over 3, raised to the power 3. This is equal to 91. The next step from here, we see that let 4 raised to the power n over 3 be equal to x. And if n3 raised to power n over 3 be equal to 2y. To Substituting x and y in this equation, we will have x to power 3 plus y to power 3. This is equal to 91. x to power 3 plus y to power 3. This is the sum of two cubes express as a to power 3 plus b to power 3, which we can express as a plus b a squared minus ab plus b squared. Now applying this identity, you find that here we'll have x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared. This is equal to 91. Now from this case here, we have that x plus y is less than x squared minus x y plus y squared and from here we have that x and y these are members of positive integers and given that x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero so the next step from here now given that x and y, these are members of positive integers, and x is greater than 0, as well as y is greater than 0. Then we have that x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared, this is equal to 91. The next step is to get the prime factors of 91, that is 91 times 1. We have 1 times 91. We have 7 times 13, and we have 13 times 7. We have that x plus y is less than x squared minus xy plus y squared. So this implies that 91 times 1, this violates the condition. 1 times 91, this is okay. 7 times 13, this is okay. But 13 times 17 violates the condition. So in this case, we have two cases here. Here we have case 1. Here we have case 2. So let's start with case 1 from here. In case 1, we have x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared. This is equal to 1 times 91. So this implies that here we have x plus y. This is equal to 1. And we have x squared minus xy plus y squared. This is equal to 91. The next step is that from x plus y equal to 1, we have x plus y. Now let's square both sides from here. So that we have x squared plus y squared. 
plus 2xy plus y squared, this is equal to 1. So from this part here, we have x squared minus xy plus y squared, this is equal to 91. So let's subtract x squared plus 2xy plus y squared, this is equal to 1. So these are two systems of linear equations. So let's subtract from here. x squared minus x squared, this is 0. Minus xy minus plus 2xy, this is minus 3xy. y squared minus y squared, this is equal to 0. This is equal to 91 minus 1, this is equal to 90. So this implies we have minus 3xy, this is equal to 90. Divide both sides by minus 3, minus 3. So that xy is equal to minus 30. So this implies that xy, both are positive. But we have negative 30, this is negative. So we have that if you multiply x and y, we are supposed to get a positive number. And here we have on the right hand side negative. So this implies that this part is rejected. So from here, let's proceed to case 2. Let's proceed to case 2. Now in case 2, we have x plus y. We have x squared minus xy plus y squared. This is equal to 7 times 13. Now in this case here, we have x plus y. This is equal to 7. And we have x squared minus xy plus y squared, this is equal to 13. So from here, we have x plus y squared, this is equal to 7 squared. So this implies that this is x squared plus here 2xy, then plus y squared, this is equal to 7 squared, this is equal to 49. Now, from the equation here, will have x squared, this is x squared minus xy plus y squared, this is equal to 13. So these are two systems of linear equation. Yeah. Let's subtract these two systems of linear equations. So we have x squared minus x squared, this is equal to 0. 2xy minus minus xy, this is 3xy. y squared minus y squared, this is 0. 49 minus 13, this is equal to 36. So we have 3xy, this is equal to 36. Let's divide both sides by 3, so that xy is equal to 12. So from this equation here, we can be able to make x the subject to the formula, so let's divide by y here. So that x is equal to 12 over y. Now, from the equation here, that is x plus y, this is equal to 7. Let's substitute x, which is 12 over 7, so that we have 12 over y plus y, this is equal to 7. So y is a whole number, so it's over 1. So let's multiply both sides by y times y times y. So this implies here we have 12 plus y squared, this is equal to 7y. So from here, let's take 7y on the left hand side so that we have y squared, subtract 7y plus 12, this is equal to 0. Now, from this is a quadratic equation of the form a y squared plus b y plus c this is equal to zero. We can solve this quadratic equation by factorization method, whereby the product here is equal to twelve. The sum here is equal to minus seven. So this implies that these factors, these factors are minus four and minus three.
So we have y squared minus 4y minus 3y plus 12. This is equal to 0. So from here, we can factor out y so that we have y minus 4. Then subtract 3 here is common, so we can factor out 3 so that we have y minus 4. This is equal to 0. So in this case, we have y minus 3, y minus 4. This is equal to 0. So this implies that we have y minus 3. This is equal to 0. And this implies that y is equal to 3. We also have that y minus 4. This is equal to 0. So this means that y2 is equal to 4. So we have y1 equal to 3 and y2 equal to 4. So let's solve for the corresponding values of x. So we have y1 equal to 3, y2 equal to 4. So let's solve for the corresponding values of x1 and x2. So we have 12 divided by y1, which is 3. So if we simplify here, x is equal to 4. So that is x1, y1, this is equal to 4, comma, 3. Now, we have that y2 is 4, so the corresponding value of x2 is equal to 12 over 4. Now, if you simplify here by 4, 12 by 4, this is 3. So x2, comma, y2, this is equal to 3, 4. So this means that we have two set of solutions here, that is x1, y. Next step from here is to solve for the value of n. And if you recall, we have that red 4 to power n over 3 be equal to x. And that's 3 raised to power n over 3. This is equal to y. From the first set of solution we have here, we have that 4 raised to power n over 3. This is equal to x. x here is 4. So the bases here are the same. So this is 4 raised to power 1. And again here, we have 3 raised to power n over 3. This is equal to y, which is equal to 3. So 3 is raised to power 1. So we have that since the bases are common here, this is 4 raised to power 1. Then that a to power n is equal to a to power m. And given that the bases are common here, n is equal to m. So this implies that n over 3 is equal to 1. So let's multiply both signs by 3 so that n is equal to 3. So this is the value of n. Let's also confirm with y. We have that 3 raised to power n over 3. This is equal to 3. 3 raised to power 1. Since the bases are common here, then n over 3, this is equal to 1. So times 3 here times 3. So this implies that n is equal to 3. Now, the next step is to verify. This shows that the first set of solutions, that is x1, y1, satisfies the equation. Let's check the second set of solution here. So again, we have that 4 raised to power n over 3. This is equal to 3. And we have 3 raised to power n over 3. This is equal to y, which is equal to 4. So if we check the bases here, the bases are different. They are not common here. The bases are not common. So this means that since we have different bases, we cannot be able to obtain an integer solution from this set of solution. So x2, y2, that is x2, y2, which is equal to 3, 4, will not give us an integer solution. And therefore, x2, y2 is rejected. Therefore, we only have one solution, one set of solution, that is 4 and 3. And the value of n is equal to 3. The value of n is equal to 3. 
So let's verify quickly here. Let's verify here. Let's verify. Now, if you recall from here, that is 4 to power n plus 3 to power n. This is equal to 91. So let's substitute the value of n. We have 4 to power 3 plus 3 to power 3. This should give us a value of 91. So 4 to power 3, this is equal to 64. Then plus 3 to power 3, this is equal to 27. This should give us a value of 91. 64 plus 27 from here, this is equal to 91. So 91 is equal to 91. So this implies that the left and side is equal to the right and side. And this implies that n equal to 3 satisfies the equation. So country, like this video and subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.